Digibytes, the future of learning. Referencing the APA way. As a student at the University of Stellenbosch, USB or USB Ed, you'll be asked to submit written work in the form of assignments, dissertations and so forth. It's a maze, this referencing business, you may think. And the last thing you want is a plagiarism alert or mark deductions for poor referencing. We're here to make sure you're on track with referencing the APA way. This Digibyte will help you outline what referencing is and why it matters, discuss the main principles of the APA referencing method, and explain how proper referencing improves the quality and integrity of your written work. We'll trace the referencing pathways by covering what referencing is and why it matters, what the APA referencing method is, the types of references you could use, an on-point reference list, high voltage in-text referencing, and how referencing boosts the quality and integrity of your work. Diving straight in, what is referencing and why does it matter? Referencing matters because you're firstly demonstrating that you have read and consulted widely, showing that you're relying on scholars, experts and thought leaders to inform your work. Referencing is done to acknowledge or credit authors or sources that you consulted in your written work. Through referencing, anyone can locate the sources you consulted at the end of the written work as well as within the text you have written. The second reason referencing matters is that proper referencing protects you from plagiarizing or stealing the ideas of others, a road you do not want to go down on your academic journey. What is the APA referencing style? Apparently, there are more than 100 different referencing styles to choose from. Think of them as different languages or codes that govern our discipline and form in referencing. We have to pick one and apply it consistently or we may get lost in translation. A quick decode of our referencing style, APA. APA stands for American Psychological Association. To speak APA fluently, you'll have to follow the style guidelines set out in this Digibyte as well as the APA referencing guide available at the end of this learning. We'll teach you some APA speak shortly when we look at in-text referencing and the reference list. There's a wealth of data out there and Google is your friend. Type any keywords into Google and the hits keep coming. You can use pretty much anything, but here are some search optimization tips for you. Your go-to should be articles from peer-reviewed journals. These are articles published by scholars and experts, the bright sparks of the internet vortex. Using a tool like Google Scholar will take you there. And here's a nifty shortcut. Your search will yield articles and publications like these. You can filter the date of publication so it hits the most recent resources and when you find a resource that's a go, you can cite the reference by clicking on this tool, copy APA over to your reference list and boom! You can also use books, videos, newspaper articles, online articles, acts, blogs, brochures or pamphlets, conference papers, dictionaries, images, illustrations, models, magazines, music, podcasts, software apps and more. Just make sure that these sources are properly referenced as per the APA reference guide. Oh, and pause here. Do try to make sure that your sources are current, no older than 5 to 10 years, relevant and reputable. Every John Doe out there has an opinion. It's up to you to be wise in the resources you select and to hang out with only the best. Okay, let's skip to the back of your written work. You'll have to submit a reference list of all the references you've used in your study. How to do this? By the way, a reference list is different from a bibliography. Think bibliography as everything you've read, watched, consumed on the topic, while the reference list is the stuff you've selected and included in your written work. The reference list comes at the end. It's alphabetical, working with the surname of the first author. 
A reference list entry runs author or creator, date of creation, title of reference and origin, where it comes from. Remember those page numbers, especially if you paraphrased or quoted the reference in text. Note that there are different rules when referencing different sources. Books are referenced like this, whilst articles or journal publications are referenced like this, and so forth. The APA Reference Guide has all the deets you need to reference your different sources correctly. Now that we've covered end of text referencing in the reference list, let's zoom in on the in text referencing. In text referencing is essentially an academic discipline and most people certainly don't write with sources and brackets. Speaking in citations seems complex, but there are simple rules. Rule number one, brackets in text. In text references go in brackets, mainly at the end of the reference or references consulted. Note that in-text referencing provides the clues or throw forward to the reference list, so it's shorter and sweeter, and it aims to lead the reader to a comprehensive, detailed reference after text. Mainly, in-text referencing is done with the author's surname or surnames and year, like this. When you have more than one author like this, it can be rather cumbersome to include all the surnames every time you reference their work. For this reason, you can use et al, which roughly means and all of them in Latin. The first time you reference all of them, you'll include all surnames, and the next time you can et al away. In-text referencing is done in alphabetical order, as that's the way your end-of-text references will be presented. In-text referencing can also feature a direct reference instead of that bracketed post note. For instance, in this example, the authors have been included in the sentence, along with the date of publication and page number. You do the same for direct quotes, like this. A tip on in-text referencing is to do a search and find at the end of your writing, so you pick up every time you use the author's surname and make sure that you've spelt it consistently. You'd be surprised how creative your spelling can become as you write. Referencing improves the quality and integrity of your written work substantially. Remember, references consulted will add a wide range of expert views and rich insights to your work. References will provide you with clues and arguments to support your own writing. The more references you consult, the higher the quality of your work. Referencing improves the integrity of your work, as proper referencing helps you to avoid plagiarism or academic theft. Also, it is feasible that, as you are still a scholar, you are still learning from others in the field. You will show integrity as a scholar and writer when you are able to factually and objectively consult the work of others instead of peddling your own opinion. Referencing helps you to be a great scholar. When we say that everyone feels this has been the hottest summer yet, that's not exactly empirical inquiry right there. It's more like a glib, unfounded shortcut. But when you consult references and state that, according to these authors from a research study from this year, the average temperature this summer has been five degrees higher than the year before, you have the beginnings of an academic argument that is backed by scientific inquiry and empirical research. Proper referencing improves the quality and integrity of your written work and allows you to be the best scholar you can be. This Digibyte Learning is available as a downloadable resource along with the APA Reference Guide. If you enjoyed this Digibyte, you might also enjoy our Digibyte on plagiarism. Make sure you do things the right way to steer clear of plagiarism. Did you enjoy this Digibyte learning on referencing the APA way? Let us know by liking, awarding or sharing. Digibytes. Discover and learn digitally.